Let's see, so I have a brand new project here. Let's add some NGRX dependencies, store effects, store dev tools, router store. We'll go ahead and add them all. It's okay. Usually I will put store dev tools in the dev dependencies, but we're using all the good things here. Um, is that it? Store effects, router store, store dev tools, entity. Um, yeah, that's probably the main ones. Okay, so we have our NJRX uh, packages installed. And so we're going to go in here to main. Let's make a file here called products.ts. And this is going to give us route. So we have component, not composition event. There. Uh, template. And we're going to say H2 products. Export default products. Component. And of course, standalone true. It would be easy to remake if I would have been one website, but managing 28 other regions and all of the unique, all of them unique. Wow. That is, a <laughs> that is a bit of a challenge there. Uh, so let's see, let's do ng serve. Go ahead and say that. Cool. We may fix some styles later, but we'll focus on the on the state for now. So as I mentioned we're going to put all of the store in a single file because we can do that now. I think with uh with fifteen point two. So let's hide that. It's a little bigger. Luke, what's up? It has been a long time. No see, and yes. We do need to go get sushi. Um, so whenever you would like to make that happen, we can make that happen. I'm just saying. But thanks for coming through. So we're gonna import some things from NGRX store and from NGRX effects. So what we're gonna do is list uh, just have a list of, and then we'll connect this to, we can probably connect this to the API also, um, with just list a few products, uh, with that. So, but we can get this stuff wired up first. Uh, so first we'll need, uh, an interface for a product. Give ID of a number and name of string. And then we can create uh, the rest of our feature state. So could probably export this also. So what all we do we need? We need interface, we need our initial state, our feature or our reducer, and then we can refactor it into, into a feature. Initial state, uh, we'll call this Oh, we define an interface for a feature, but not for interface for a product, but not one for our product state. Uh, and we'll just style this one a collection of products and current product ID of number. In our initial state, product state be a collection with an empty array and 
number and null, we'll go with that. Current product ID is null. Uh, so we have our, I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit. So we have our initial state and we have our uh, reducer equals create reducer in our initial state. We're gonna add some things here, create action group, which we'll use in a second and create effect, create effect and actions from that which we'll need in a second. Uh, so let's create some actions that we'll use in the reducer. Products actions equals create action group. And we'll use our source as products and our events. And we'll have one for enter, which will be empty props. So we won't have we won't pass anything when we enter a page. And we'll have a load products success. And this one will be props. And we'll have products. And then we'll have one for load products. And we'll change this to products loaded success. And products loaded failure. So be props also with, which you can make this what you want, but we'll just say an error is a string. And so we have our at least three uh, actions there that we can use. Going back to the reducer here, um, we're gonna add some handlers for our reducer. So we created the create action group uh, we got enter, our enter action, and we take in a state and an action. And we're doing our usual spread. And we're just going to reset the collection uh, whenever they enter. So, hey, hey, Andres, what's up? Glad to see you. Thanks for coming through. Um, what are we doing today? We are doing some, we're doing NGRX in a, all of NGRX in a single file <laughs> because we can't do that now. Uh, well, we probably could do it before, but it's a little more, it's a little less friction now, I would say. So products loaded success, state action. Yeah, I talked about um, NGRX 15.2. And action.products, products loaded success. What am I missing here? Props. Oh, that's interesting. Is this props? I see. One thing I didn't do here was I didn't call this as a function. So it didn't give me the type inference that I needed down here. Now it works correctly. Nice catch. Um, products and I can take out an action here. So we'll have our, we could, could also add an error handler here for a failure, but we don't need to do that just yet. So we have our interface, our, interface for our product, our state, initial state, actions, because we can create, it's very simple to like line these up in a single file now. So um, we have those and our reducer. Uh, so we should, so that is, and we can go in here in our products and we can add some imports here. Let's see what we need. We need async pipe 
and ng4. And we'll add our ng on init. And because we're doing inject all the things, we'll do private store equals inject store. Of course, you can still use constructor injection if you would like, but we're just using the uh, inject function here. So inject for dispatch, and then we'll have product actions dot enter. And then we'll need a one for products. The modern way, <laughs> Dominic, yes, of course. Products equals this store dot select. And we don't have a, a selector for this yet. So we're gonna go with how you would uh, select, do this if you weren't using a create feature. Uh, create feature selector and call this products export cut select all products. I don't know why I just want to create a, a function there and have it do it for me like it was magic, but <laughs> that's not where we are. Uh, so we'll create, we'll select product state and we'll have state there. And we'll have state dot collection, I believe. Unknown. Can't remember if we deprecated this or not. Okay, there we go. So select products. And we haven't wired this up to here yet. So we have select all products and we'll come in here and make an unordered list. And we'll use ng4 we'll select product of products and we get some nice help from language service at least and product dot name should be enough to start a nice list with it's not working because we haven't registered yet so if we go to our main dot ts and provide store. Now I am going to keep this one empty because of course we like to keep things modern and provide state. And we're going to call this products and a reducer. I should have named this products. Let's go back with that. Um, skip changes. No products. Okay. And we have to update our route for our products here. Okay. So we have our main here, our product and provide store dev tools. Uh, we can add that. Let's see if we're back uh, here. We have the products. Okay, cool. So we haven't fetched any products yet, of course, um, but we could see if this is working. So we can go in here and create an ID of one and a name of my product. Let's call this my course. Everybody likes courses, I guess. So that should give me create feature selector, select product state, collection. And we 
we have our, okay. So we had our initial state and then we had our collection there. And then when I hit the enter, I cleared the collection. Uh, so it's behaving as intended. Uh, so let's move and then we'll, it's doing what I told it to do in this case. So let's move the collection from there. And just for listing, we can list the collection there. So now we have my course. We can make that a little bigger. So that's all oh, that's working good and well. But of course we want to, uh, so we can remove that. We want to uh, connect to an actual API uh, to get a list of products. Uh, and we do need effects for that. We're, we still have everything in one file also, uh, but we can, we can shorten this up even a little more uh, with create feature because we created these selectors manually here, um, but we can cut down, cut that down some. So let's uh, export a kind called products feature. And we'll say create feature and add that import. And we'll give this a name, not an in name of products and reducer. And this should be in an object uh, reducer. So we can take our reducer from here. and put that in here. So now we have our products feature, uh, products feature here. And now that we don't have our reducer here directly, what we can do is just drop this products feature into the provide state uh, function there. So we save that um, and provide pro and create feature. It does, like I mentioned before, give us some helper functions there, helper utilities there for creating additional selectors. But one thing that it does give us out of the box is these selectors that, uh, some of these selectors that I already have here. Uh, so we're gonna export const of um, equals products feature. And we're gonna select product state from there. So it'll give me the select the same selector that I wrote manually there and I'll, along with the other uh, selectors that I have. So I could do select collection and select current product ID uh, also. So if I wanted to use uh, the Instead of using the hand roll select all products, I could use select collection as select all products. And then we can delete that one. So we still have first empty products there. Let's add one ID one product or name my course just to make sure everything is still connecting correctly cool my course uh, so this would be a good way to shorten up the like i said we're do, we're seeing how much we can squeeze into one file and we've gotten a good bit of the way there great selector And if I, as I mentioned before, if I wanted to add some uh, extra selectors here, I could provide the select uh, collection and select current product ID. And we'll wrap that in a callback function. type errors. And 
and just give me an area here. Same string has no. Oh, it should be extra selectors there. Okay, cool. Um, so if I want to name one called select current, select current product, I could use create selector and select selection and select current product ID and products and ID and use products dot find ID equals ID. And so then that one would come out here as select current product as an extra selector that we can use. Uh, now also not using of course injurex entity here, but if you were to introduce injurex entity to manage the products collection, uh, you could still use create feature and add your entity selectors to that. Um, and I don't have an action here to select a product. Uh, product selected. And this could be props. This would be ID of number. And if we could come down here and we'll copy this one just for that sake. And we could say product selected state action and override the current product ID with the ID of the action. Cool. So we still got my course. Uh, so let's hook the, the products up to the API. Or right, let's move our products into an API and go and fetch them from there. So we'll take my course out of here and add, we have a server routes in here also. So we'll add one for products. And I'm just going to paste this in here first to make things a little shorter. So define event handler. And we just paste our array of products in there. And see if our, let's see if our route is ready for that. So let's copy this. And we'll use API slash V1 products. And now we got some data that we can use in the app. And this is what I was mentioning about uh, Nitro that we're using it under the hood to give us an API. Um, that's just kind of baked into the analog app. So if you wanted to store some data in here without having to bring in a whole new um, API layer, uh, you can do that and it's still all baked in there. So we have our, we have our products page, our products API, and now we need to go and fetch that data uh, with effects. So now with the, as I mentioned before, we have, we have the option to use functional effects now. Uh, so I can export directly in this file, a const of load products and use create effect. And we can say actions. Once again, because we're injecting all the things, we can use actions equals inject actions. And what you don't have to use it this particular way, but uh, it could make testing easier down the road. So, because this will just return you a function uh, that you can just use. So I'll write this out and then we can look at uh, what that provides. 
I thought I already had inject import in here. I guess I didn't. Cool. So we have actions. Then we use of type products actions dot enter. And we want to use exhaust map in this case because we want to go and fetch the products and we need our uh, you could do this with a service um, also let's see what are we we're gonna to type our observable unknown okay I haven't returned anything yet so that's why it's giving me an area there but exhaust map I want to we're doing this the, the shortest way possible. We're just going to inject, use HTTP uh, to inject our HTTP client. But you could have a service here that you use inject with as long as it's provided uh, in the correct scope uh, for what you want to use. So we can use HTTP get. And we say we're going to get back a list of products. And we're going to use API v1 slash products. And we're not having to use like this or anything like that, but as you could. Uh, so we bring in our map. We have products and we want to map those to products actions. Products loaded success and pass our products to that. So we have our, this is all you need to do, uh, minus one more thing. Uh, we have our functional, we have definitely have to set our functional flag to true. So, and what that gives us before is, now it gives us a function uh, that gives us an, an, an observable in return, so. You can just call this as a function now. Um, and if you think about it from a testing point of view, this could be, you know, my mock actions. And you could just call the func call the functional effect the same way. And that's because we're using this particular way to inject the dependencies, um, which I could drop the HTTP in there also. Um, but that depends on, all depends on how you want to handle that part. I'm just kind of showing the different examples. So we have our low products. Uh, we do need to register our main effects so we can use provide effects in here. And we'll show it this way. Um, we can use our load products. And I should have export const load products observable. And we can load that in there. So we're we're gonna work under that. We're getting the API response back correctly. We could you also, if you're doing this in an actual application, you need to of course catch errors um, and handle those. Yes, Andreas, thanks for coming through. And handle those. So uh, we have our products. Let me check the chat over here. Cool, so we have our products and if we go back to our app now, so we still need to let's see if we no provider for HTTP client. That is correct. So we do need to go in and we'll add it above the store here. Provide HTTP client there. And now we are, let's go and just double check that we're back to our store with our empty collection. 
to start with. And then we use load products. We go and fetch the a data from the API and we map that to our products loaded success. And let's see if we can verify this in the store dev tools. We have enter empty collection and products loaded success with our uh, new product of my course. So we've uh, moved most of, as I mentioned before, we'll move, we're putting all of NGRX in one file here. And we did this in kind of in two, we did all of our state stuff <laughs> in this file, but uh, we did uh, bring some, import some of those things from, and so import some of those things into our component. Uh, but like I mentioned before, with the inject uh, functionality, we can move even more of these things into this file. Now, whether you, like I said, want to do this in practice is um, something you'd have to decide on. But uh, for this exercise, we can go back to our main uh, dot TS here saying we should have provide store and provide state and provide effects. So we're going to move store and store dev tools up to here. Uh, but what we want to do is move provide state and provide effects back into here. And we can do that by creating a function uh, called provide, we can name this provide products feature. And what we want to return here is a function that's called make environment providers. And I think this is new in Angular 15.1 um, to where you can, it can take providers, like these are environment providers themselves. But now we can take those environment providers and and move them into uh, this file here. But now that we have our provide products feature, uh, we can register our state and our effects in, uh, in there instead of in here. So um, we'll leave provide effects uh, in here just to register our root uh, providers, um, but we can remove our feature level things individually and use provide products feature here instead. And we'll move that down a little bit. So we were able to move, uh, we'll save that. Go back to our app here, everything's still good. We're able to rem uh, move our feature into our uh, products file here. So now if we really wanted to go, <laughs> if we really want to move as much as possible from our feature into this one file, uh, we've moved all the registration of the feature and Oh, Dominic, you were there. Cool. Hopefully it got some good value out of that. Uh, if we wanted to move, more of even more of the products feature uh, to use the in, take advantage of the inject. Uh, we can use the product action and select all products. We can come down here and we could create another function called inject products feature. And what do we want to do in here? Well, we can bring in our store. So we can inject that. Um, of course, we want to return some API of things we want to expose. Uh, so we could have one for our products. And um, depending on which one you want to do it, we could have store.select, select all products. 
and if we wanted to wrap up our our API in here, we don't have a function to do this today, but uh, just as an example for our enter, we could store dot dispatch uh, products actions dot enter. So we have a nice kind of concise API to inject into the uh, function here. So we can close our API routes and go back into products, our products route. And we can come in here and we say read only products. Now I'm not totally sure what we could name this, but we can name or bring an inject products feature. Um, I, I suppose we could even do this, but it's, I wouldn't know if I would call it a view model with a dollar sign because it doesn't give us uh, an observable out of the box. But uh, what it does give us is a nice API to uh, call functions and remove uh, the store from injecting that into our component, which I know a lot of people are a fan of. And they usually use something like a facade for this particular feature. So, but this would be, this could be another way to kind of encapsulate, uh, and we're right at 100 lines. Um, this could be another way to encapsulate the, the store and expose that, expose the feature to your route uh, here and still have the actions and the um, observables kind of wrapped up in that way. And we're, like I said, another thing, we're not using a class here. We don't have to use a class and then we don't have to use a class an injectable decorator and those extra things to do that. So, and all that seemed to work pretty well. So if you haven't touched NGRX in a while and you're wanting to learn about the new features, kind of walk through some of those, or if any of you, if you haven't, if you've used, haven't used component store, interest component store, I'd say definitely check that out too. And I got to talk about extra selectors for create feature and functional uh, effects. So big shout out goes to shout out to Marco who has been grinding away on the, the feature. So definitely want to give him a shout out and the rest of the team too. Um, but Marco has been definitely holding down uh, the Indirect's feature front uh, these days. And what's up, friends? Hope you enjoyed the video. We talked about a lot. We went through Indirect in one file, component store, talked about analog, the meta framework for Angular apps. Uh, so if you enjoyed that, hit a like on the video, subscribe to the channel as it really helps me out. And leave a comment also uh, what you think about the new Indirect's features uh, with functional effects and extra selectors. And with that, uh, we'll see you in the next one.